In our first telecast of the swing, right the of the year, Jason Belmonte threw one bad shot, and it cost him the match. He's back again in the PBA Badger Open from Detroit as the PBA fall swing continues. Thunderbolt Lanes in Allen Park, Michigan is home to the PBA Fall Swing. And today, five bowlers compete for the PBA Badger Open title. Now let's meet our finalists for the Master of Ceremonies of the PBA Fall Swing, Dennis McCamery. That's right, I'm Dennis McCamry, your PBA MC, right here in Detroit, Michigan, and I'm very, very happy to be here for this PBA Fall Swing Tour. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for you to meet your bowlers. The number five seed is a three-time and reigning PBA Player of the Year from New South Wales, Australia. Make some noise for Jason Belmonte! The number four seed is in his rookie season, making his second TV Finals appearance from Quebec City, Canada. Give it up for Francois Levois! The number three seed won the 2015 Barbasol PBA Players Championship from Guelph, Ontario, Canada. Make some noise for Graham Fall. The number two seed holds nine PBA Tour titles and was the 2012-13 PBA Player of the Year from Montgomery, Illinois, Sean Rush. The number one seed is a 10-time PBA Tour Champion and 2009 PBA Player of the Year from Pflugerville, Texas. Make some noise for Wes Malat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, these are your bowlers right here for the PBA Fall Swing Tour. Let's hear it. Make some noise. Here's the step ladder, which will lead to a champion today. Three-time reigning PBA Player of the Year, Jason Belmonte. Number five seed, he'll take on young star Francois Lavoie of Quebec, Canada. Fellow Canadian Graham Faw of Guelph, Ontario, awaits the winner as the number three seed. Second seed, former PBA Player of the Year, Sean Rash. Our top seed, Wes Malott, with 10 career titles in his 16th year on the PBA Tour. My broadcast partner, the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson, joined now, lane side by Jason Belmonte. And thank you, Dave. Uh, Jason, a bit of a slow start, Belmo-ish, if you will, to the 2016 season. But, man, did you turn things around at the fall swing? What changed? Yeah, you know, I have high expectations of myself. And uh, whilst it wasn't a terrible start to the year, it certainly wasn't where I wanted to be. So, you know, I uh, lost a few kgs, really worked hard on my game, making sure that it was as solid as it was a few years ago. And, and, you know, things felt great this week. So I'm also taking a little bit more of a, a happy-go-lucky attitude, not so much pressure on myself, and just enjoy, you know, I'm here I'm in Detroit enjoying myself. That's the part of uh, the thing that I was missing. Uh, folks, kgs, that, that's pounds, only in Australia it's kilos. So, Jason, how much added pressure is it for you being the three-time reigning player of the year? Uh, you know, it shouldn't be, but I think I allowed it to get to me a little bit. You know, a lot of people say no one has ever won four in a row. Um, and, you know, I caught myself in conversation at home saying, I'd love to win four. But that's not, that's not what you're supposed to do. You know, you're supposed to just bowl, and that's a bonus at the end of the year. Instead of trying to chase something that far in advance, now I'm just going to kind of keep my eyes more in front of me. And uh, right now it's these ten suckers down there, and I'm going to try and hit them over. Thanks for your time. Thanks, mate. All right, guys, 101 PBA members, eight amateurs, nine countries represented to begin the PBA Badger Open. Tom Doherty, EJ Tackett, Ernie Champs on the PBA Fall Swing. And the Badger Open, longest pattern at 52 feet. It will be a challenge. And we are set for bowling from suburban Detroit. Belmonte. Francois Lavoie to get us started here today. Randy has sprinted back up the stairs and joins me now in the booth. 
Lavoie. Not a bad start. What do you think of Belmo's demeanor down there? Randy, you were with him just a moment ago. I think, I think it's the right uh, mindset, honestly. Confident, but not overly so, perhaps. 12 top timeouts. Stop to a good start. Yeah, the Badger is the longest of the named oil patterns at 52 feet in length. And the ball reaction that you're going to watch today, folks, is like old school. You're not going to see that big back end reaction. Players have to keep their lines in front of them, their targets in front of them. Even when they break down, their lines have to be extremely straight through the front part of the lane. Second. Oh. Stop. Really good start. That's uh, about 17 or 18 out to about 16. <laughs> That's pretty straight. Remember the pocket, folks, on the right side of the lane, 17 and a half board. Right at it. Here's the youngster. Francois, Frankie Lavoie. Former start at Wichita State. In search of his first title. Two pretty good shots. They're going right at that 1-3 pocket, Randy, aren't they, in the long oil pattern? Yeah, just a couple weeks ago, we saw Francois Lavoie going for his first ever title at the Wolf Open. And just beautiful form. He's uh, another product of Wichita State, and they keep pumping out great players. And it's just a great program. But Frankie's got that classic style. Doesn't have a lot of hand, but he's great at what he does, and he's a shot maker. Can we continue to start? Not quite. Ten pin. And that's what you're going to see today when the ten pins are lead by the right-handers. Most of the time it's going to be a flat ten because the oil pattern's so long. You get a little quick. You get a, the ball a little bit to the right. It's going to be hard for it to face up. Watch the six pin goes to the sidewall and just kind of lays there dead. That's a flat ten. We saw eight tens this week. We saw five tens this week. Francois grew up in Quebec City, and you play hockey in Canada, Randy, you know that. Until he was about 9, 10 years old, played a lot of hockey, and then he said, my friends hit a growth spurt. I didn't, so I stuck with bowling, which he also <laughs> loved. Tremendous. Split the year between hockey and bowling, and made a pretty good decision. Great career at Wichita State, and now the PBA Tour, but facing the three-time reigning player of the year in Jason Belmonte. His third shot is also a strike. So, you know, that's the thing, Dave. A little bit right of Francois' week 10, and you carry that light hit. A little bit left, it's solid in the pocket. It's that one little spot where you leave that flat 10. Take a look at this form that has awarded this man player of the year three consecutive years. That little hop and that pivot step, that's just a short pivot step to power into the slide. The thing to watch with Jason as we take a look at his arsenal is he's using a high road, which is kind of middle of the road for, for him in terms of strength. But it, it's the fact that he has this big drift in that third step. Watch it here. Ooh. Nine pin. That's nasty. And what makes Jason Balmonte so scary is that you know, with all that power, he can go that straight. And when he's able to do that, uh, he's almost unbeatable. And asking him why so much better on the short pattern a couple weeks ago on the Wolf and then here the Badger, the long pattern. He's not known for bowling well on short or long. He said, Randy, it was all about my angles. Has his mark. I thought it was interesting, Randy, in his interview with you, Lane Level there, about 
How he admitted, yeah, yeah, I do think about player of the year, winning it a four straight year, saying it out loud. It's hard not to get caught up in that when you have such incredible success. Second appearance, fall swing for the youngster. Mm. Ten pin. Flat ten in the third and <laughs> ring ten in the fourth. Watch how straight this is. This is right at 13. This ball's hooking a total of four and a half boards. That would be about four inches, four and a half inches. Frankie has his mark. Business administration major at Wichita State. Does some work in the IT field, but he's focused full time on his bowling career. Team Canada. Masters of the 2016 Champion of Champions in Mexico. Part of Team Canada, as you see, Francois' arsenal. Going with the phase two, pretty strong. Boy, right at it again. Got that look. He was going at that rosin bag pretty hard, too. It, it, kind of, it was kind of reminiscent of Wes Mallott, our tournament leader. They really like to get in there and work the rosin bag with fingers and thumb. Sure what the move is. I'm not entirely sure what the move is off of the ten bits. Belmont has his own answer. And all 10 down for Jason Belmonte. He's kicking the corners out right now, Dave, and the only blemish on the scorecard is a solid nine in the fourth, but watch the six go to the sidewall. Slaps that 10 silly. It's like the 10 pin owed the six pin money. <laughs> How much? How many? Is that Aussie dollars? By the way, in the interview with Randy said he lost some kilos. He said about 20 pounds. That's very impressive. And I like think from seeing him on the fall swing, it looks great. 10 kilos, he said. It's that uh, there's it's 2.2 pounds there you per go. kilo, 22 pounds. Thank you. Good conversion. Well, and I was told there would be no math. Oh, Just a little left to target, looking for that ball to actually fade into the pocket. And it, it just tricks up and trues up just a pinch to go high for the four pit. That's the hit he wanted. That gives him a double and puts him in the 220s. Francois Lavoie now can step up six seventh and take the lead. Jason told us uh, back home in Australia when he goes to Grandma's house, I maybe mean, not as much pasta and bread. She's a great cook, he said, but I got to ease up on that. Want to look better, want to feel better to win at the PBA Tour. He's looking good so far. For house downtown, Motor City. <laughs> We're now in park just outside downtown Detroit, and we are ready to resume this first match. Lavoie, the youngster. Monty, the superstar, who survives and climbs the ladder. Oh. You know, See a few of those, haven't we? Yeah, sorry, Dave. He was talking to his uh, tour rep about the adjustment he needs to make on this right lane with these 10 pins. He was unsure. It's one flat 10, two ring and tens now. Trailing by 11 with a conversion here, but I'll, I'll tell you what, he sure learned a lot in that Wolf Championship match against Doherty where he had a, actually had a chance to shut out Doherty and win. He was working on a strike in the ninth frame. He got up to the 10th and threw it. What appeared to be a, a, a nice shot, only to 2-8-10 and lose. Right now, he's hit the pocket every shot. Three 10 pins, three strikes. Two Canadians competing here today. Win 
So Ron Terry just across the Black River, not far from here. And all 10 down for Francois Lavoie from Quebec City. Dave, do you speak French? Un petit peu de français. A little bit. Very, that's my, that might be about it. God bless you. <laughs> well, German is a different story. I can hold a little, pretty know, long conversation. Yeah, here. no, I know you're you're pretty affluent in German. Affluent? Yes. That, that too. <laughs> 11 pin match. Keeps kicking that 10 out on that right lane where Francois keeps leaving it. Just a little ride of fourth arrow. Remember on the left lane where we went four pin, he was like right over fourth arrow. Left lane the last couple of weeks out here for both uh, Wolf and Bear has been a little bit tighter than the right lane. His opinions are strong. He's never afraid to let you hear them. Tune in to the Doug Gottlieb Show presented by Sleep Number. Weekdays at 3 Eastern as Doug turns the sports world on its head right here on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Belmo. Ooh. Oh, it's trouble. Almost had a split there. And just a six. That was actually in a good spot at the Tracers. Not sure if his speed was a little on the softer side there, but watch this. This is just slightly right of fourth arrow. And then it breaks loose right before he gets to the 1-3. Yeah, wasn't expecting that one. Takes care of business. Okay. Big shot here. He hasn't struck yet on this lane since the first frame. Oh, excuse me. Uh, since the second frame. You mentioned his Team Canada experience. Told us yesterday that helps a lot when it comes down to big appearances like this. It's pressure and tripped out seven. <laughs> Keeps things very interesting late in our match. Well, Frankie's showing the world in the last couple of weeks that he is a great bowler. And at such a young age, uh, it's just a matter of time. Will it be today? But this young man can bowl. Grand Fop, Francois Lovois. In our show here today, Canadian contenders for Rookie of the Year. Graham has his title. Francois would like to follow him for the championship today. Shots like that, he might. Belmonte in trouble. Max score for Belmonte, 239. Francois Lavoie can strike out in the 10th for 248. Graham Faw is next up as the third seed, winner of this match. We'll take on Graham. Oh, no! Foundation for needs it, has it. <laughs> Difference in this match, quite honestly, is the fact that Belmonte lost the left lane. However, if you look back on a couple of really strong ring and tens. If, if Frankie carries those two hits, this match isn't even close. Back-to-back -back high hits on the left lane that Jason Belmonte has to finish on. Tap on number 10, down it goes. Yeah, but what hit it? To I mean, begin the did 10th. the vortex of the ball suck that pin off of the lane, <laughs> off the back of the lane? Check this out. Barbazal close shave replay here, Randy. Six. Oh, well, the six pin just got a just little a piece nudge. of it. Hello. Tap. Needed it. Down. Needed it. Needs this next one to have any chance. Oh. 
All right, two more strikes here. He, well, at strike nine, he forces Frankie to get two in the 10th. Another strike here in nine, he will shoot 238. Frankie would then need a double. Big shot here. Are you kidding me? No. I didn't know. 710. Wow. I didn't, I didn't know that was possible in this pattern. 810, 510, but 710? Two out of three weeks, Jason Belmonte faces elimination. Only the 10. Seven stands. <laughs> 226 for Jason Belmonte. Strike, it's over. Nine spare strike, it's over. If he gets anything less than eight on this ball, Belmonte wins. So he's got to have eight. That was all the way. And he gets eight. He needs to spare strike to tie. What a finish. This was left out of his hand and quite fortunate, the 10 falls late. He needs to spare this and strike on the fill or Bill Monte advances. All Belmont can do, sit, watch, and hope. Starts here, 4 7. Yes, got that. Can I get a re rack, please? You gotta take re a re rack. Take a little time here, Randy. Well, Belmonte can't lose. Parallel. Making a move off a bad shot, I I'm not so sure about. You know, he flushed every shot on that lane until there, and that, that shot was pulled. That's for the tie. How about this finish? He's got to have it. Four pin doesn't get it. Unbelievable. And Jason Belmonte on the bench watches. Lavoie, fearless strike, and wins by one pin. What a finish to get out of the next match. You, you got to ask yourself, how much did the ring and tens affect what Frankie did coming down the stretch? In trying to make the ball strike, I, I mean, I've seen it happen over the years so many times where a player gets trapped because of bad carry. So Belmonte thinking about another Player of the Year award. It wasn't easy, but it gets by Francois Lovois of Quebec City. Next up, Graham Faw from Guelph, Ontario, when we return. 226, 225, Jason Belmonte survives against Francois Lovois. What a finish. And we're pleased to be joined by our guest commentator for this event on the PBA Fall Swing, Chris Barnes, future Hall of Famer, 18-time PBA Tour Titleist. Chris, that was a wild finish in the first match. What went through your mind watching that? Well, it's great, but you know, one of the things you hate going in the 10th frame is having to make moves. Jason had to make a big move on the left lane. I didn't like his chances of making the shots there. He made two, you know, one really good one and one okay one. Frankie, I thought he made the right moves there. I, I didn't think he needed to move, and then he did move, and it still had high. So he obviously saw something that we couldn't see from up here. I know you talked about it going to break, Chris, and you've been there, I've been there. But how many times do you see bad carry affect shot making? Oh, it absolutely does. And the worst thing you can do is try and make a strike. You would think after all these years we'd learn 
<laughs> but uh, th that move never works. Most of the time it turns into a big four, and this time it turned into a four seven that, uh, that it ultimately cost him the match. So it's a big name, Jason Belmonte, three-time player of the year. Some other POIs in action as well, and Sean Rash, Wes Malott. What do you make of their games right now at this point of their career? Well, they're still on top of their game for sure. Uh, uh, Sean hasn't been as hot in the last year, year and a half, as he was during those runs where he and Jason were at it all the time. But uh, he seems to be back. He's working real hard on his game, and Wes is still Wes. I mean, he's got the best hand in the business. He, he's got uh, – I won't disagree with that. He's got a great hand. But watching Wes Malott the last couple of days in this event, his knees look like they're bothering him. He's actually down to four steps for this tournament because the ball pattern's so long, he's trying to get real slow. But he looks like he's in pain. Just my, just my opinion. All right, Randy, keep an eye on that. Chris will be our guest commentator. Looking forward to that here in Allen Park, Michigan. We resume PBA Tour on CBS Sports Network from Thunder Bowl Lanes. PBA Fall Swing, CBS Sports Network updates you on the Badger Open step ladder bracket. What a finish between Belmonte and Lavoie in our first match now. It's Grand Fa of Ontario, Canada, and Belmo head to head. Three and five seeds will meet. Rash and Malott await the winners. Peterson, my Hall of Fame broadcast partner, and Chris Barnes with us in the booth for the rest of this broadcast today from Detroit. Belmo starts the match with a strike. Well, that was interesting, Chris. Yeah, it'll be really interesting to see if he does that on purpose or not. Uh, see, he got that one up in the air, and I don't know if that was just a a uh, out of the break kind of <laughs> a little a loft there. That, that, yeah, that, that that had to be a hundred percent. Uh, intentional. I would think so. Yeah. I mean, and that's the biggest issue between the arena side and the opposite side is how much earlier sure. that the arena hooks. The surface is a little older or on this side. Chris, advantage or disadvantage for Grandpa being the only southpaw? I would think, generally speaking, in most shows where any of the two handers are on, it's probably an advantage, but on this long pattern, you have to break it down some at very limited practice, at 10 minutes of practice, all they had before the show started, so it's hard to do much to help yourself create some hook here. Um, we'll know in those first couple frames, because whatever he has, he has. The longer Jason goes, the better he's gonna get. And there's that seven pin for his mark on the big southpaw, 24 years old, rookie from Ontario. Interesting story about him, Dave, that when he started bowling, he actually used two hands like Bill Monty and then Saw that. converted back to one. At age five. But when he got to be 12 years old, he was strong enough to bowl with one hand. Ten down for Graham. Talked to him a little bit before the show, and he's not his advantage is worth really that he can throw the ball a little slower than the other left-handers, and he didn't have to be nice to it at the bottom at all. And you talk to the players, all of them say they're catching it. You know, they're trying to hit it for all they can to, to get it to tip just in the back on this 52-foot pattern. I asked Belmo in practice when he left a flat ten. I said, hey, what's the adjustment? He said, catch it more. Shot all 10 down for Belmonte on that lane. And guys, Jason told us pre-match, confidence plus feel equals success. You guys won a lot of tournaments between you. 31 by my count. That's a pretty good combination as we take a look at his form. I'd say that's pretty spot on. You have both those going. You're going to have some pretty yeah. good days. See what he does in this lane now, guys. Not a loft. 
big four. Okay. That was I mean, bad. Not do that again. That was left and more loft. Yeah, he's obviously feeling that friction in the front on that yeah. left lane. Decided just to loft yeah. on the left lane because he didn't do it on the right. Right. But that was well inside a target. But Chris, is that necessary? Why can't he just continue to move left? Is he afraid he's going to lose carry? I think he's afraid to lose carry. They're so tight down the lane. Once your angles get too far left, you lose your ability to get to the oh. get to the flat ten, even even for Jason. Now, will he actually? I don't know, but the perception is certainly what he's feeling is he doesn't want to go any further left right now. Lofting like that with no friction. I mean, obviously, there's friction up front now be because mm -hmm. of the laydown area that the players uh, started at, but lofting it like that with no friction to throw into. Interesting. Just saying. Back to Graham. <laughs> and a 4-7. Same hit for... Uh, Graham, as for Belmonte, but the big difference is Graham Fogg gets eight, Belmonte got six, two. Breaking down splits on your bad shots has a lot to do sometimes with uh, with who wins and who loses. My, uh, oh my, yeah, absolutely. Guys on average, I think, make about eight really good shots a game in their good games. Mm -hmm. And uh, what happens on those two have a lot to do. Sure. Or like Frankie's case, uh, you know, two of the good ones were ranked hands on the same lane, which yeah. means you got four frames without a double. Certainly made a splash. PBA Tours, he won the PBA Players Championship, a major and only a second PBA Tour event. You guys both won major titles in your great careers. What's that like, Chris Barnes, to win a major championship? And nothing feels better than beating a field full of professionals at the top of their game. They all want to win these things and to uh, to finish on top. But I don't think there's anything feels better than that. <laughs> Look at the celebration there. Yeah, that's good stuff. Michael Lagan Jr. and company. But obviously, uh, Graham didn't use the shaving cream. <laughs> Just, just saying. Nice shot for him. He is going at a Dutch 200. Spare strike, spare strike through Forge. Belmonte coming off the open. Only trails by eight. And he wants match here from Allen Park. Good nine. Didn't like it, but. It's well said. Yeah. Yeah, some nines are much better than others. Good nine is right. The ring tens are, are brutal, feels brutal, but that one there had a chance to be another six count. And, and uh, this lane's just a little bit better, I, I think, in general for most of the players. It's, it's a little cleaner to it. He's not having as much trouble getting the ball hooked in the front. And uh, makes a little better move in the back. Four. Belmo last time out, of course, had that big four. It's only been done once on TV. Big four split conversion. And Randy and I called that back in 2005. Norcross, Georgia, and the great Walter right. Thanks, Ray John. Williams Jr. Past champs, Russell O'Neill, Jake Peters, a new champion here today. How many times, Chris, have you made that big four? Ever? Like twice, twice. I think. Twice. Wow, is it <laughs> I, I've made it 43 times, Dave. 43 yeah, times, Randy. 43 times 43 I've made it. 43 times. PBA's Extra Frame, your home for exclusive live coverage of the PBA, PBA 50, and PWBA tours. Beginning Saturday, Extra Frame is streaming live from Sawgrass Lanes in Florida, where a PBA tour title is on the line. Don't miss a minute of the action. Yearly, monthly, three-day subscriptions are available. Yeah. Click on the Extra Frame yeah. link at PBA.com today for more information. Uh, all right, Dave, so I, I embellished a bit. I, I didn't make it 43 times. I made it zero times. Zero times. And that okay. time, it's different Belmont, than 43. And that time, Chris Belmonte goes away from the loft, moves in just a little bit more, and carries the Wally. Yeah. Do you feel like that left lane's been tighter in front of the head pin? It's been hard for the players to get the ball to go through it anyway, no matter what the length of the pattern is. Mm -hmm. And that may be why that was option two versus option one. But uh, with his power, it seems like just, just touch the one in front. Yeah, right. Here's a tap on the seven. Graham has never lost the TV match, of course. The two wins en route to the PBA Players Championship in Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> well, Tomahawk seven here. Ooh, Watch the legs get cut out from that <laughs> from that seven pin. <laughs> like it was trying to run from something. 
Just chopped the leg right out from underneath it. Here you look at, at Graham's arsenal here, and he's he's not using the strongest ball. You think on 52 feet, I'm using my earliest rolling one. Too much early friction is no good on this long pattern. It will be good carry on the 10 pin. It's a strike for Graham Fall from Guelph, Ontario against Jason Belmonte, the two-hander from down under. Good match here today. Belmonte Fall head ahead. Brett Spangler, Graham Falls, Tourette, speaking a moment ago about strategy. That's not a whole plane. That's my guess. Yeah. So, if I have to go over top of it, I have to. Right, right. I don't think you're there yet. It's just, it's got to, it's got to get past it quick. I think I got to keep it slow. Right, right. Yeah, I just, I just think we're hitting their lines on this lane and not on this one. Okay. Said he was hitting their lines, the righties' lines. Yeah, well, some of the guys are practicing basically just Jason's. I don't think anybody else is that deep. Huh? Well, I, wouldn't think they'd, I wouldn't think they'd be close. With Graham's playing around second arrow, Jason's at fourth arrow. But they're, I mean, he's not crossing any boards. Six frame, there's to cut it to 18, works on a strike. Help me out, Chris. Uh, I think, uh, well, I guess we'll get an idea right here. Just watch where this one gets laid down. Wow. I got laid down a couple. Was it that far? Not a good guess. Got caught up in his own transition. It is one thing. It's a lighter volume because it's, it's the same volume. It's spread out over 10 more feet, mm -hmm. and it just ends up playing much lighter, and the front breaks down much quicker. about the blue oil, you can see it break down. He's actually right. laying it down right around 25, which really Graham is laying it down right in that same spot. They're only crossing each other for six inches or so. But right. Four, six, seven, close. nine, ten. Close. <laughs> only a six pin count. Ouch. That one hurts the score a little bit. Yeah, five, yes, it does. Five one's never good. <sighs> Yeah, honestly, where he's at, he's get, he's feeling like that big double before the break is big there because it forces him into into trying to go for the slightly higher percentage uh, to make. Well, he eked by the first match. He's going to need a small miracle to get by this one. That was big as well. <laughs> the front part of the lane is really going. Breaking down in a hurry, Jason Belmonte probably started a good, what would you say, Chris, about 10 boards right of that uh, in match number one? Yeah, now he's sliding 30. Uh, so probably not quite that far, but he was in there for sure because, like you said, he was crossing 18, 19. That was 23, 24. That's in there. Look at that average. There's two wins, a major championship. Huge lead here. Well, we saw Belmonte do that in game one, but boy, you, hard to fathom the ball going right by the eight pin when it's really not curving, but what, more than four boards? Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty brutal. It, you can see where they laid it down. They are indeed crossing each other, yeah. going through the front, and Great. the angles aren't steep, so it's three or four feet, and maybe that's actually why Belmonte's ball is starting to hook. You know? it's a great point. It's really so few shots, we don't really think about it happening that fast. You know, in a singles match, you don't, you know, even even with TV and the lights, and they do break down faster, but because it is so much thinner, and uh, the balls are using, everybody's using symmetrical balls, but they have some surface on them mm -hmm. to get them to, to pick up down in the in the mid lane. They peel it off that front pretty fast. Do you like this pattern? I do like this pattern because one of the keys is a speed control. Young guys throw it hard. Really good.
good shots right there. That could have put this thing away if that, yeah. uh, that eight pin goes. There's Connie Faw. Girlfriend as well for Graham. the deck but no luck with number 10 that time that's a pretty bold move right there that's uh that's he moved about 10 or 11 boards right went from a high rg ball down to a low rg ball and uh with a little bit more shine on it and kept it in front of him like you said Randy, it was desperation time he has to have the last six to have any chance moved all the way right out to where frankie was playing with that same exact bowling ball Really not a bad strategy, Frankie, in a lot of ways, pulled a really great game there, so. <laughs> yeah, he had nothing to lose. I mean, trailing by 45 and not going anywhere. Sean Rash, former PBA Player of the Year, awaits the winner as the two seed. Our top seed stepladder finals today is Wes Malott. Ten career titles. Not great breaks here uh, for Belmo in this match and a split here. Yeah, some days you're the dog, some days you're the hydrant here. This is a hey now. <laughs> one of those days, isn't it, Chris? Well, and really, I, I love the move because playing it safe, if he gets a double somewhere, he loses by 30. What's crack at it? Well, you lose by 70, you lose by 30. Take a chance, give yourself a chance to, you know, even an outside chance to win. You want to take that. It's close. He's been a lot of shows. Four nine, I oh. know. He was close, Belmo, but. Couldn't convert. A forgettable match, too, here for Jason Belmonte. Well, you guys have called all the previous the previous uh, pattern shows. Uh, have you seen a lot of transition, a lot of breakdown as a uh, as the match has gone on? We have. I mean, not so much in the front part of the lane, though. You know, we had a lot of urethane go down the line. And, uh, the first show with the wolf and so it's more down lane carry not so much in the front this looks like it's all up front yeah it is officially over now Graham Fall, the three seed will advance to take on Sean Rash our two seed here in Allen Park Michigan impressive for the 24 year old bidding for his second career title he'll climb the ladder Sean Rash is next Grab Foss through for the next round. Jason Balmonte really struggling with open frames, splits everywhere. And the three-time player of the year use, loses 249 to 161. Fall looking for his second career title today here in Michigan. It is time for the Ebonite flashback. The longest of the PBA's animal patterns, the Badger. Last year's finals, a little bit of everything with Ronnie Russell coming through for the victory. Walter A. Williams Jr. and his quest for his 48th title would end in match two as Russell delivered two strikes in the tenth to knock off the legendary Hall of Famer. The number two qualifier, Rano Page, up next for Russell. And after Page opened in the fourth frame, Ronnie threw strikes in frames five through nine, walked away with a 244-193 victory to advance to the finals and take on the top qualifier, Dom Barrett of England. Four-time champ Barrett struggled on the pattern while Russell settled down after an open frame in the first, delivered strikes in frames six, seven, and eight, and walked away with his third career PBA title at OKC. Feels good to have two of these stage three overall. A day to remember for Ronnie Russell in Oklahoma City winning the 2015 PBA Badger Open. Who will win it in 2016? That's the question. Graham Faw from Ontario, Canada. Sean Rash, the two seed from Montgomery, Illinois, just outside Chicago. Great match coming your way next on CBS Sports Network. Detroit River separates the United States. Detroit. And Windsor, Ontario, and this is a battle of USA, Canada. Sean Rash, Graham Faw head to head our third match. Rash the two seed. Wes Malott, the only 
Blair ahead of Sean. Awaits the winner. Thumped the three-time player of the year. Match two. The ball gets started in this match with Rash. Got nine. Dave Ryan with PBA star Chris Barnes, our guest commentator for this tournament and this show, and Randy Peterson, my Hall of Fame partner. A little cold coming out of the break. It's hard to tell yet whether he made a move off of uh, anticipating having to move because of, of Sean's practice or whether uh, whether he just missed it just a little at the bottom. As a three pin has his spare. Now Sean Rash, 34 years old, 11 years on the PBA Tour. Nine titles. Magic number 10 perhaps comes here today from just outside Chicago. Well, you can see just how slow he got his feet started there, Chris. And also, he said he's gone from a four-step approach to kind of a modified five-step. You can see that first step was just a little shuffle. But look at how slow he's trying to get those feet moving. And, folks, the easiest way to control foot speed yeah, song is, is how quick or how late you get the ball into the swing and how slow you move that ball away from you. That'll tell your feet to go a little bit slower. You want to get your feet moving, get the ball into the swing quicker. Right now, Sean Rash delaying the push away, keeping the feet nice and slow. Slow first step as he told him to such a key and all 10 down there. I think that's a great point, Randy. I, I was going to say the same thing. I get, that's as good a pace I've seen his footwork. And one of the reasons why he hasn't been able to throw it very slow in the past is his feet were so quick all yeah. the time. And I also feel like that really, with very few exceptions, players with four steps have a difficult time slowing down. That first step is kind of a pace setter for your yep. entire your your entire move. Yeah, that's a great point. I think you're right, Chris. Second frame for fall. Good looking shot into the one-two pocket. The lone lefty blitzes through the rack. Yeah, a beautiful shot here by Graham Faw. Came in light, first frame on the left lane, but that was perfect. And that's a 10-pin party in the pit. He keeps averaging 263 on TV. He's not going to lose very many matches. Yeah. 279 against Simonelli in the title match at the uh, Players' Championship. Tough to keep up, guys. Six pin. Was it just me, or did that ball look like it hooked early? It looked like it jerked in, in the front part of the lane and it just kind of laid there. Yeah. I, Watch this. Know, we. Oh, yeah, right before the arrows. Right? I mean, that ball stood up, and it, which that, should, in theory, be past where the Rainers are going by. Yeah. So it's his only. He's following his own transition. Right. It's only him. It's amazing how, how fast it's happening out there. And it is an experienced surface. So, uh, but uh, we uh, didn't see this type of transition the first two weeks. Sorry, Dave. We didn't yeah. see this for uh, uh, Wolf and Bear. We didn't see this type of transition. No, not at all. Not at all. It, uh, <laughs> you know, I explained it. The guys are using a lot of surface. They are not moving very quickly. And he's obviously repeating shots enough to, to beat it up. It did go all right, Sean Rash. Wow. Good looking shot right at the 1 3 pocket. That shot there reminded me of. Was it, wasn't it Bo Jackson who had that uh, that run of like 80 yards and he kept going all the way through the tunnel? He just kept, kept yeah. on running. Yep. That was. Uh, that ball just went through the pocket and kept going. Gina Diane Rasher here, Sean's parents, Sarah, 
Sean's wife and little Kaylee, two years old. Just turned three, sorry, I'm corrected. Hoping to see Daddy win here. One of the big keys for Sean, and really most of the players, is going to be how end over end he can keep it, because that will make it make transitions much smoother as they break down to the front. Going with the melee jab. <laughs> Well, I, I watched Sean Bull a lot this week, and I'll tell you what, I don't think I've seen him this this crisp and this solid. He was able to do uh, just about anything he wanted to do. Right now, it's all about keeping his hand up the back of the bowling ball and keeping it online. And uh, I, I'm not sure I've ever seen him physically better than this. Family right next to him. Off to a great start with the front four. Fall. Spawn, seven pin. Chris, you get down early, like Graham Faw, and then you hit the pocket and you don't strike. What goes through your mind? Well, I, th I think he's, uh, you know, <laughs> oh no, a little bit here, because uh, he felt the early friction on the other lane. He either got nicer to it there or moved, and then that got him in behind the head pin, just a touch for the seventh pin. Now he's got three lanes a little bit independently. Tuesday through Friday night, 6 Eastern host Adam Shine turns the enthusiasm up to 11. Gives you his take on everything happening in sports on and off the field. Dive at Adam's mind on Time to Shine, only on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Dave, I'm not sure uh, anybody has shined brighter than you during the fall swing. Just just throwing it out there. I really appreciate that. Seventh pin. <laughs> Chris, the key to this pattern is getting your ball to go through the pins the right way. Not all that difficult to hit the pocket, but very touchy to get the ball to go through the pins and take out the week seven, the week 10. What's the secret? Yeah, that's where the trick you saw Belmonte try and go over the top of it. You'll see guys move left to right. It looks like Graham had moved a little bit right. Now it's getting a little flat. Now you're going to find out the bag of tricks. You get a little softer with your hand to get it through the front and still get it to roll. And that's really the expertise of our leader, Wes Mawat. He knew it. And Wiss on the seven, an open frame. Rashford with that huge lead and a perfect start. He's really sitting pretty now. Talked about it in our on camera, uh, what bad pin carry does to the psyche and to the uh, concentration of a player. Way too many times, Mr. Spare, thinking about the next adjustment. Yeah. Time to put the hammer on him. And comes in high on the four pin stands. Nice break when we're leaving the four pin. One of those good nines there. Yeah, another good nine. That's a good term. I got to start using that in league. <laughs> there are not very many good nines in league. <laughs> <laughs> wow, really? You had to go. I, you know, I was trying to have my moment. I was going to, you know, throw a bad shot, get nine in league, and say, well, that was a good nine. Can't even do that in league. <laughs> Depends on how much handicap you're getting. Uh, actually, in Thursday nights, I get two pins. There you go. Way to work. Yeah. <laughs> Stay hot, Randy. <laughs> good, good for me. Sean Rast, last title, Extra Frame, Iowa Midwest Open and Council Bluffs. Stream live on Extra Frame, PBA.com. 42 pin lead here. He just wants to go into the break on a strike and give himself a little momentum. Something to remember the rest of the, the break. And it's a 10 pin. Shot. Much better. Online. Stayed with us from good. One of the things that really changed about Sean's game and is when he started that run there about three, four years ago is his balance at the foul line got excellent. And uh, seeing more of that. Uh, actually kind of a hallmark of the Wichita State Shocker program too. Just another Wichita State alum. So many shockers like Chris Barnes. Immense success on the PBA Tour. And a lot of success for Sean Rash here. He has a huge lead against Graham Fall. Great 
Great job. And a winner. I think Sean would appreciate that too. Good timing. That yeah, was pretty good. Player of the year in 2011-2012. After that, it was all Jason Belmonte. As we saw in the Columbia 300 fun fact. But Sean Rash is focused right now on trying to wrap this match up. And he's in great shape, guys. Huge lead. Final ball change here. Responds, ball change, all 10 down. A little bigger core, a little more responsive, I believe. And really, again, a good move. He's got nothing left to lose. He's really got to come close to striking out here to, to have any chance, at least a three or four bagger to put some pressure on Sean and make him make him think about it. He, and he might need some help anyway. But uh, good start there out of the break. One of the hardest shots to throw after that three or four minute delay. That just didn't look right when he let go of it. He had that little skip there, and well, that had tug written all over it. Came over just a little bit over the top, and it seems like that lane is hooking earlier. It hooked, you know, both left and right handed. I don't think you can get away with that in shot on that lane. Lane seven, the left lane. Four seven, wow, chops it and misses out on the seven pin. Look at that lead expand for Sean Rash. Well, it certainly falls right into Sean's hands. Now he gets three frames, four frames to, to uh, kind of get in rhythm, see if he wants to make any changes. He's going to throw these first two out of the break and throw the best ones he can, lock this one up. Seven and the 10 pin for him. It's all right. Keep the ball in play. And that's fine for now. Now he's going to start thinking about the next game. So be thinking about or or talking with Chuck about what uh, what he wants to do to make a small adjustment to get it to carry. Perfect timing. A piece of the ball return there the way through. Make sure that's all right. Let's take a look at his form, guys. Well, again, talking about setting up timing, watch how late he pushes the ball or gets it into the swing. That's going to keep his feet slow. He's already taken a second step before the ball even starts moving. That's going to slow your feet down, folks. If you want to get your feet moving, you want to throw it faster, get the ball into the swing earlier, the feet will follow it. Hard to believe, Randy. Ten years ago, you and I called at and Parkersburg, West again. Virginia. First career title for Sean Rash. Looks like a re-rack here. Oh, second by on that rack is awful. He All right, well, like I'm going to re-rack for set. him. Sean told us just great memories. Wants to make another memory here. Looking for a 10th title. Double figures. If it's oh, yeah. get that far on the PBA Tour. It's on second ball. Good shot there. I thought he got it a little further right than he has any other shot this game, and it, it came off of didn't it. Didn't have my rewreck. It, it, it came off of it better. Which yeah, that, that's that's a oh yeah exactly. <laughs> that that was a, 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 a oh yeah, now now he doesn't have to be quiet. So mm. up the back of it, he can touch the holes a little and yep. get it to come around the corner, knock out that ten pin. That's a good sign for Sean Rash, not so much for Graham. Oh, that's not at all, but he get him. A break there, he'll take all 10 down. Nothing like caving in the bucket when you're trailing by 50 pins. That's exactly what Graham Plott did right there. Yeah, great break, very timely. Yeah. You don't want that one in a 10 pin match. No, no, no. No. <laughs> Wes Mallott awaits the winner. Looks like that's going to be Sean Rash. It's like striking on your fill shot when you're already beat. There. Well. No, 
No. It's, it's no. It's not Chris. He needs a mark. No. <laughs> he's he fine. He only needs one he's in the next fine. two frames. I'm telling you, he he's fine. One. He should be okay here. Foundation frame. And works on a strike. Got five strikes in the match so far. See, even I can't kill his hopes and dreams. <laughs> title on these types of patterns, no stranger to Sean Rash. Capture the 2014 Wolf Open title. Knocked off, not other than Chris Barnes in the title match in Oklahoma City. Probably not great memories of that for um, you. I had almost forgotten about it until just now. <laughs> so I'd like to thank until our, we rudely reminded you. Yeah, yeah, thank you and the producing crew for throwing that one back up there. Again. Don't look <laughs> at me. I had nothing to do with it, Chris. I swear. Uh, it, was all uh, it was all Randy. I think it was, it was our Randy. director. I think it was our director, Mike Roth. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Rothy, JT, our great crew. In the truck here. We'll go way back with covering the PBA Tour and all the events that Chris has been a part of over the years. Whoa. Yeah, I didn't want to practice shot there anyway. Mm. No. That's been a great week, all right? You too. Shot Rash will bowl for the title. He will win this one and take on Wes Milan. The championship match from Allen Park, Michigan. Fall swing rolls on. CBS Sports Network. One match left today to determine the PBA Badger Open champion. Rash or Milan? We'll find out. How do we get to this point of our TV show? Let's find out. Grand Casino, Rob, championship, Randy. I had a great match in match number one. Francois Lavoie, Jason Belmonte. Belmonte, blower 7-10, second ball in the 10th. Looked like he was going to lose, but Francois gets eight, spare nine. Belmonte advances by one pin. Belmonte then takes on the lefty, Grand Fall. Who would have thought Belmonte was going to shoot 161? Well, guess what he did? Grand Fosh shoots 249, throwing the last five to take out the reigning player of the year. And then in game number three, it was all Sean Rash. He got off to a red hot start, throwing the front four, and he never looked back. Caught a late double. He takes down Grand Fosh 224 to 205. Setting up our championship match, Malat Rash. Seeds one and two, but only one can take home the 2016 PBA Badger Open from here in suburban Detroit. That trophy, big prize money awaits the winner. Nineteen titles between them. Time PBA star Sean Rash now called Chicago Land his home. <sighs> Family they see Sean off to a great start. Guys, I, I see Sean is poised to win again. Whether or not he does, well, we'll have to wait and see, but he looks like he's firing on all cylinders. He looks like he's ready to win. He f looks good physically. He looks good mentally. Problem is, he has to, to take on this guy. <laughs> 39 years old. Oh, no. 35 wins on the Where did like it? Comes in high and a seven pin count in his first shot. First shot jitters right there. That's what you can't do. See if he can cover. Yes, he can. Let's take a look at our tough spare replay brought to you by Hammer. Chris and Randy, what do you think here? Well, he covers it correctly with uh, covering all three with a bowling ball. I mean, that's that's textbook. Uh, you can make it the other way. I wouldn't recommend it, but. No, uh, that's PBA kryptonite right there. Yeah, it is. Six ten. <laughs> yeah, and then if you want to, if you want to uh, add a little bit more suspense to it, throw the nine pin in there with it. 
Not on this pattern. You don't need a part of that one. Four pin there That's for Wes. His ball's creating way more shape. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's interesting you say shape, Chris, because I asked uh, when we talked to Wes, he said, you know, normally this 52 foot pattern uh, doesn't fit his eye because he likes to create shape. Well, I think it plays to his advantage, obviously, that's in the last match versus an earlier one. They've broken down a lot. Sean playing, the thing is very direct and playing to the right of him. Should be helping him. If Wes can get lined up in time, he'll be able to give Sean a run for his money, but Sean is lined up, and he got a strike on that left lane, which is a tough one for him. Lined up, yes, agreed. Shot 224 the last game, opening in the 10th. Okay, so we'll give him 230, he makes a spare. Does he have enough in terms of bar reaction to shoot over 230? And that wasn't me, that was him. Yeah. What do you think? Can I think, you, I, think 230 st I think third 230 is still a really good game. Okay. Because of the friction in the further left. And Wes has already given him two two frames up here to start with. If it takes him one more shot to line up and say the, the left lane, now he's four frames in without a double. It's going to be hard to get to 230. All 10 down for Sean. Now look here, guys. This is top notch. Once again, posting the shot up perfectly, very end over end, minimizing the transition that's going on in the lane right now. Everybody else is getting caught up in it. He's just striking and then flat tending off of small moves. He's, he has very little moves. Certainly a mistake I made in qualifying this week. I actually got around it a little bit more uh, away from really much strengths anyway and really hurt me in the qualifying. And, uh, a common thread among these guys is one, symmetrical bowling balls, and two, as end over end is in their their skill set. It's all matching up pretty well for Sean Rapp. About it. Right that one three pocket. Gene and Diane, Sean's parents here. Stay focused on yourself. Come on. Sarah and three year old Kaylee. I know Kaylee has moved to grandma's lap. There she is. Got the doll. You don't have little girls, so. No. You guys are getting older now. You're twin boys. <laughs> Can't believe it. Freshman high school already. Can't be right. Westbrook. Seven pin. Everything but go down. Yeah, that's, that's always uh, nice to have happen to you especially when your opponent starts off with the front three and you flush it and leave a stone seven. Technically a little bit high, but uh, <laughs> Oh, hey, they're just. Now you're picky. Yeah, that's, they're not that easy. All right, guys, time for the track tech talk. Well, break down his game here. Barnsey, in my opinion, West Malott creates a unique ball rotation because of what he does at the bottom of the swing. Now take a look at his fingers, and they're easy to see because he's got yellow tape on those fingers. Look how he tilts that wrist to the inside part of the ball, and then starts to rotate around it, and then ends up back up the back end. It creates a very unique ball rotation. The Marshall Holman of this generation. It's incredible. Yeah, no one else does really what he does. No. Makes a reverie look so big with so effortless in the front lane. How good is that out of his hand, though? Seriously. When he gets it going, it really does make it from a lot of different places. It's I mean, you know, and you being a student of the game, have you ever sat back behind and maybe taken video of Wes Malott and tried to create or duplicate what he does? <laughs> I've just been envious of it mostly. Gotcha. All right. It's really so I'm unique because he is, he's a big guy. He gets way over in front, right. which we don't really recommend, but then he digs back in with his legs. Now, when he got, his knee got hurt, wasn't the same bowler for a while. Knees are getting better, not quite where he wants them but it's stopping from being as dominant. Go, go. It did go all right. Wow, 60 feet to success. Sean Rash shreds think, the rack. I think by go, he meant go faster. Yeah. <laughs> that, was, that was on 17 at about uh, 40 feet. Yes, sir. That that was the high, hard one right at the 1-3. Wow. Now, can he throw the next one and get back into the right pace? All right. Four in a row. Start the match. This looks familiar. Busy for the line. front five. 
He has a busy mind. It's always been. It, it's been a, a challenge for him. Deep breaths, get it slowed back down. From one busy mind to another. His wife watches closely. And the four pin. Chris, uh, and, and I say that with, with all due respect. And if you say with all due respect, you can yeah. say whatever you want. But, <laughs> you know, you've had a great Hall of Fame career. But you've had you've had a busy mind at times as well. What do you do when you're, I mean, when you're sure, really good, you. you're good mentally as well. What's the difference? How do you change that? It's really about focusing on a couple of things. The, the, uh, I don't believe that in the zone thing really happens for certain brain types. So for me, it's about concentrating on one thing that occupies it. Gotcha. It keeps everything else kind of the space. When it starts jumping around, that's when bad things happen. But would you not agree that, that when you're at your best, there's very little conscious thought process? Oh, no. it's, it's all, but it's primarily, fo I can keep it focused on one thing. Gotcha. I'm very focused on that. Breathing a lot, honestly. Is, <laughs> Is it, it just a, it just a, a distraction, a deterrent? Yeah. It's it's one of the things that preoccupies you. Light hit results in the two ten. I thought that was going to be the shot to turn this match around right, right here, and it was just bad out of his hand yeah, and this doesn't look comfortable. Which you were talking about earlier about him wanting to open up his angles. And that one got away. He goes a little bit further left. His swing tucks a little bit more in behind him. When he does that, it naturally feeds to the right faster on this. That's death. Yep. <sighs> so here's what Chris is talking about. Watch the figure eight in West Malott swing. Swing comes out, tucks to the inside, and if he tucks it too much, he's going to project too far right. Six frame, and a 10 pin. Chris, I, I always thought that's what made Weber so good. It is There wasn't a whole lot of thinking going on there. He put the ball in his hand, and he looked at his target, and he threw it. And, I mean, his motion is so efficient anyway. But there wasn't, all, there wasn't a big thought process going through it, and he never really got in his own way. I agree. Guys, Sean Rash in great shape. 43 pin lead looking for a title today in Detroit. Badger Open Trophy. Who's going to win it? Sean Rash in great shape moments ago. Sean having some fun there with Dennis McCamry, our MC here. PBA fall swing. <laughs> it's okay to. Have a couple laughs. We got this big a lead, Chris. Is that a nice way to relax on the TV break? Would you do things like that? Yeah, somebody who runs a little a little high stress like that, he wants to be more relaxed. He's gone from that way from the rainy hour. We're talking about different ways guys uh, adjust to the nervousness. And everybody gets nervous on TV. He's gone to be trying to be a little, a little more low key, making it less important. Six frame, works on a go. spare up by five pins. Wow. Barnsley, every time he said go, it's gone. It sure has. In, in revisiting Slow the down. mental part of it, I think one of the things that made makes you so great and, 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 and help this Hall of Fame career out is you're so, you're so good mentally and, and you're such a technician that there was almost oh. no way they could shut you out. You're always going to oh. find a way. When it came to TV time, you bowled your best when you found a way to focus, like you said, on one certain thing. I, I I don't think Sean Rash is that far off because we watch him compete on a lot of different patterns. He bowls good on just about everything, and then he gets to television, the same kind of thing. I think it's a great point you make, trying to get his mind to focus in a certain direction. Oh, God. Wide oh. right, but still an eight-pin count, just a one-two up. Whoops. W what say you to that, Chris? <laughs> yeah. And that's just letting one get away. He's thinking about the title here, would be my guess. So, I mean, it, again, this is only by my own experiences. You're way ahead. You got your lined up. Things are going pretty well. And it slips away from the present moment to somewhere else. I think that's absolutely perfect. Chris Barnes, beautiful mind, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> 
Every blessing is a curse. <laughs> Wes is great. Wes is great at getting angles, and then but today the angles is not great. Um, you know, but you talk about the same thing. Ball and you know, Pete, even Pete, he's fantastic on TV. Got a million shows. He uses anger right. to chase away. Exactly. He's not an angry, mad individual. He's no. the nicest guy you know. But he needs to be there to chase away the other stuff. Right. To hyper focus himself. Yeah, it's a great point that you that you make. <laughs> Right now, Malat's having about as much fun as a colonoscopy. He can't wait this for this to get fun. over. <laughs> can't get to the pocket uh, enough. When he does, he doesn't strike. He's got one strike through seven frames. And the big guy is not having a whole lot of fun. Really good thing He's not annoying or nothing. Yet. It's a, yeah. Something to avoid, I think. Tom Strobel, owner of Thunderbolt Lanes here in Allen Park. Great to see Tom here. He and his staff just a fantastic job. Historic building. We're in the arena as it's known. What a setting here. Yeah. Great crowd. Great history here. He's done a nice job of, uh, of hosting us. Uh, great room, great space here in this building. I did a, an exhibition with Wes. Uh, get amped up on this bag? About a Can month we? ago, five weeks ago. Uh, we did an exhibition at Lackland Air Force Base. It was myself, Wes, Carolyn Dorn Ballard, A.J. Johnson. And we bowled a little two-game match, the old folks against the young, the young guys. And Wes started with the front uh, 18, shot 300 the first game. And you said the, the front, front 18, six. right? You just said that. The front 18. Wow. Yeah, so 300 and then the, the first <laughs> six the God. next game. So. Better than most. Amazing. Yeah, and Carolyn and I just kind of looked at each other and said, oh, yeah, this is fun. Not our day. Sean on a 229 pace really has everything he needs right here. He, yeah. just, he, he just has to make quality shots down the stretch. It's going to be fine, but he's got to stay focused on the moment for just a little bit longer. Stay in the moment, just like you said. Don't start thinking ahead. Got to finish. And with shots like that, he's going to do it. Wow. Title's his if he does exactly what you said, Chris. Stay focused. First stay one, in please. the moment. Don't look ahead. You get your one strike away. From winning your 10th title and securing your place in the Hall of Fame. And I guarantee you, at some point during this match, all of those things have gone through his, yeah. his mind at least once, and that's where you have to bring yourself back. What do you say, baby? <laughs> Getting double figure titles. That means consideration for the Hall of Fame in his 11th year. Sure liked it for good reason. Refocus came back after that Aaron shot, Chris, and, and that's really all it was. The match wasn't really close, and it's easy to wander. Yeah, it is. It is easy to get out of there. West can still shoot 215, so technically not completely shut out. But it, at this point, we're just a few pins away. He knew he threw that one good too. That was the old post up. That, that's one of the Norm's moves right there. Yeah, Stand there and back to back jacks. Sure. Money shot. Watch it. It's high. And West is West never Malott. getting comfortable. That first yeah. shot over hooking. And yep. then. Agreed. And by his own ad admission, he said, you know, I, this is not the pattern for me. It's official. Sean Rash has won this title. Emotional moment for Sean. And the career win. He told us yesterday, has good memories. That first career title in Parkersburg, West Virginia, 10 years ago. He had to make two two tens and a washout. Converted those, shot two forty, beat Mike Scroggins and then Mike Devaney for the championship. And that was number one. This will be number ten here today in Allen Park. <laughs> nice, Sarah. Three roll Kaylee. Boy, they love it. His dad's bringing home the title. Big West is going to be back. It's just there's so much good in that game and so much good in that hand. And when he gets, uh, you know, we get back on that roll there, and uh, we got some big tournaments coming up, and he'll he's going to make another run at some shots. Uh, My concern is his his knees. His right knee, I think, is the is the big issue right now. 
Uh, he's already had one knee surgery. Um, you know, he's, he's worked on trying to keep some of the weight off. Uh, the, the, the biggest killer for knees, it, it, and I, you know, I know it firsthand, is weight. You, you start putting extra weight on, and you don't keep the quad strong enough, the knees start to suffer. And Wes is still a young man experiencing knee issues. And the mortar lock tricking out the tenth when you shut out. Uh, and here you go. Sean matches West's total, I believe. They both now have ten titles, and uh, it's a pretty good feeling to get that tenth title, qualify yourself for the Hall of Fame, and uh, do it by laughing. You, know, you get to, to really enjoy the tenth frame and, and the, uh, the victory lap. He deserves it. He, you know, I, I don't think there's anybody out here that's surprised, including myself. I'm watching him this week, watching the last couple of weeks uh, during the fall swing. I mean, he's he's looked so solid and so good. The speed control thing's big because it wasn't one of his strengths. Yeah, I agree. Uh, before at all, and so uh, what he's doing today wasn't impossible, even during his run three or four years ago. Uh, he's he's rounding out his game. He's coming more complete. Family rounds out your, your overall importance and your priorities, and it takes a little pressure off of what happens out here, I think. And uh, this is a, it's a pretty nice performance. Two big games today on a, on a pattern where a lot of guys struggled to, to put two games together. Great. For sure. Remember, I asked you, does he have 230 in him? Yeah. How about 259? <laughs> 259-195, and Sean Rash, once again, is a PBA Tour champion. Thank you, Detroit. Family's gonna come celebrate. Come here. Oh, Kaylee on the way. Oh, 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 oh man, goodness, she okay? Yes. Oh, no. Oh, no, dear. Oh, hey, she fell the, the way out. She was hurrying. Oh, I think she'll be okay. Well, Dad's Where's got God? you now. <laughs> it's all right, honey. Hey. Sean Rash wins today in Allen Park. Here in Detroit, Sean Rash, no problem with West Willot, the top seed, 259, 195. He posts that beautiful strike to wrap it up for his 10th career title. PBA Fall Swing Overview, Tom Doherty, second career title. Same for EJ Tackett winning the PBA Bear Open, and the Badger Open goes to Sean Rash, former PBA Player of the Year. Joined now, lane level by Randy Peterson. Thanks, Dave. Uh, Sean Rash, first of all, congratulations. Just a masterful performance. I have watched you for the last three weeks, bowling on three different patterns, and, and it's no big surprise. What was the biggest change for you coming into this event? Well, the biggest thing, Randy, is I battled a hand injury from November to June. Uh, I popped a muscle on my right hand. It was some tendonitis. I don't even know what it was, to be honest. Uh, but we've done a grip change since uh, Lubbock or Jonesboro, one of those extra frame tour stops. And it's been a combination of a lot of people, not just myself. Uh, Chuck Gardner, Billy Orlikowski, Cecil, Ryan Mal, basically the whole family of Brunswick. And even guys out here on tour from going from no grips to grips, uh, just trying to take a lot of pressure off my hand and just let it come off it instead of, you know, I'm getting a little older, uh, 34 <laughs> now. Yeah. And can't do the things I used to do. Uh, you know that feeling. So, um, <laughs> but it was just this pattern was keeping it in front of me, filling frames. Uh, I was more upset missing that 10 pin in the semifinal match than any other shot I threw in those two games. And uh, after that, I went over there and shot 10 10 pins and just tried to get make sure if I left one, I made it. So it's uh, a lot of hard work from a lot of people and very excited to get the number 10. I uh, want to really thank our sponsors, Tom Strobel and Thunderbird Bowl, Thunder Bowl uh, for all the all they do for us. Ten years ago, you won your first title. Ten years later, it's number 10. Hall of Fame eligibility. Congratulations on a great day. Thank you, Randy. Thank you, everybody, for watching. CBS Sports Night, thank you so much. Brunswick, you're the best. Appreciate it. Thank you, Sean Rash.
Fun to watch him win a title today. Be sure to be with us next week. The PBA Detroit open at 9 Eastern. And beginning on Friday, log on to PBA's Extra Frame video subscription service to check out the preview show for next week's PBA Detroit Open. Congratulations to Sean Rash, winner of the 2016 PBA Badger Open. To my partner, Randy Peterson, and PBA star Chris Barnes, it's Dave Ryan saying...